Hey y'all! Well, this episode I'm going to talk about something really... Maybe it's not weird, but it was... It caught me off guard. And I was trying to just go, what in the world is going on now? And so... If you've been following this thing on my 300B amp, which I built a long time ago and I've been doing some upgrades on, I crushed this capacitor, this big film cap, this big Solene, you know, 33 UF cap. So I replaced it, fixed the intermittent short problem I was having, and all was good with the world. We put these ISO Tango transformers on here, and again, I was like, Super happy with the way it sounded. Had this really just almost crushing bass. I mean, man, it was almost like, if any of y'all have ever been to a top fuel drag race, you know what I'm talking about, the crushing bass. I mean, you could just feel it in your chest. But you, you felt the bass more than you heard it. Plus it had this really nice punch and you could hear the delicate kind of treble stuff, but it wasn't overwhelming, it wasn't fatiguing. It had that nice warps to it. It just, it was the whole package. So when I put some pictures of the inside of the amp showing you guys like, yeah, here's what happened with the cap. Somebody pointed at, hey, I see some super cheapo China something. Let's see what these things are called. Um, Chin X electrolytic caps. They were on the front end filtering. So I'm like, okay, they got a good point. I've got nice high-end everything else the other power supply caps were some you know pretty nice JJ axial electrolytics there was you know the rest of them were Nikicon stuff and so I looked through my stock of parts and I had a couple of these 47 UF 450 volt Nikicon caps so it's like easy enough let's swap those out before those things fail blow up cause a problem then the other thing that was brought up was people talking about they'd seen several of these Solene caps fail. And then I think back to, you know, the intermittent forum posts of people having problems with them blowing rectifier tubes and trying to diagnose that, which was probably a bad film cap. And so maybe these aren't the best thing to be using in the first cap of the power supply. And so... I remember that I bought a pair of these DC Link Wemo caps that are 30 UF, which are super close to what these measure between the two of them. There's just a few UF difference between them. So it's like, I'm going to go ahead and swap this out too while I'm in the amp. And then, you know, this is a higher quality cap. It's got kind of this hard plastic covering on it. It's going to be more durable and yeah, we won't have problems in the future. So, take the amp upstairs, hook it up. I've gotten kind of addicted to listening to Hugo Cant out of time, especially the first side of album one. Those three tracks are just mind-blowingly good. And they're really a good showcase for listening to a really good amplifier. There's huge dynamics in that track. And especially the third song, Clouds, it starts off with this little harpsichord kind of, you know, music and, you know, the solo. And then, boom, the bass and the whole, you know, drum kick and everything all hit. And it's just awesome. So, hook the amp up, cue up that album. The harpsichord sounds kind of irritating. It's almost just, ugh. I mean, it's almost shrill. And then when I'm waiting for the bass hit, it's just kind of a wet rag. And I'm thinking, what happened? So then I'm thinking, man, am I just tired? It's almost one o'clock in the morning. You know, are my ears just off today? And I know there's people out there that say, you know, you can't tell or remember what something sounds like, you know, past 30 seconds later and I I just don't buy that I know what this track sounded like on this amp with those speakers and everything and it wasn't there so I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait till tomorrow morning before you know it's late you know so I'm laying in bed 
And I tossed and turned, going, you know, what, what's going on? I mean, I, I didn't really change anything. What happened to my amp? And then, so I got up in the morning, listened to it again, same thing. Just, it was fatiguing to listen to it. I listened to several other tracks on that album, put another album on, got up my magnifier, looked at the needle to make sure, you know, if I got a big glob of some crap on my needle, or is there something else going on? And everything looked fine. And so I started thinking about it. It was like, this was the big change. I mean, I swapped from one electrolytic cap to another, which I can't imagine. I mean, weird things have happened, but I can't imagine that that like, changed the sonic tone of the amp. I thought, maybe it's this film cap. And I've always been of the school that, especially in a single ended amp, the power supply just needs to supply clean DC and all the sonic stuff comes from here over. That this is just creating nice clean direct current. The sonic change stops here and all the sonic goodness happens over on this side. As long as you don't have noise, you know, this is to get rid of noise, filter out, any kind of, you know, stuff so that you get nice clean DC. So, I, you know, it's going. I, I can't imagine that trading one film cap for a different film cap that's the same rating. They're both, you know, within a few UF of 30 UF, 600 volts, could make that big a difference. So I put the Solene film cap back in. Obviously not this one, you know, the, the new one. And... Went and listened to it, and it was back. The top end didn't sound shrill. The bass was just, boo. I mean, it was just, just like it was before I changed out this cap. And that's really got me rethinking the importance of tuning the power supply components to you know, adjust the sound signature of the amplifier and the impact that it has. So one thing I want to do next is I want to pull out this Solene and just put in a Nikikon electrolytic cap and see what that sounds like and see if good, bad, the same, whatever. Because I've built several of the smaller amps without a film cap on the first cap, but used just electrolytic caps because I didn't think it made any difference. And I'm not sure why I decided to put a film cap in this amp by 6SQ7. It's got the same Solene film cap on the front end. And it sounds fantastic. And so, it, is there something going on there that I was previously unaware of in the past too? I, I was always one of the school of... You know, the rectifier tube, and a single, especially in a single ended amp, because there's no sag, the current draw is constant. No matter what the music's playing, the current going through the tube doesn't change, or changes very little, that the rectifier tube is not going to have any, any impact on the way it sounds. And on this specific 300B amp, I had tried that vintage Newell Stock Mullard, that's like the Holy Grail rectifier. I tried it. I tried... Gold Lion, I tried uh, Tube Amp Doctor, they all sounded the same to me. I didn't hear any difference at all. And so, I guess with a sample size of three, <laughs> I made that claim. Now, maybe when you get into the direct heated rectifier tubes, kind of like with these direct heated triodes, that, that they start impacting the sound in a way that these indirectly heated rectifier tubes like these 5AR4s don't. Maybe that's what's going on. I, I'm not sure, but it's really got me rethinking this whole power supply thing. And then I remembered when I first built the 6SQ7EL34 amp, I built the power supply, all the you know caps in it were just straight electrolytic caps. And on my Blue Glow amp, Kegger's schematic showed putting 0.33 UF bypass caps across every electrolytic cap. And I had done that on the Blue Glow KT88 that I built. 
And I always struggled with that amp getting the shrillness out of it, at least to my ears. So I tried putting those 0.33 UF bypass caps across all the caps in my 6SQ7, and it did what putting this cap in, this amp did. It brought out like this shrillness top end. I mean, if you really like that detail, I mean, there was, you could hear every little breathiness in their voice and all that, you know, up there at the top end, but it was just too much to me. And, and maybe some of you like that sound. I don't. I like a more kind of mellow, tubey, warm, just lush sound. And so when I tried that on my 6SQ7EL34, I pulled them out just instantly. I mean, I went and listened to it. And it's like, this sounds horrible. And so I pulled them all out. I didn't try taking them out one at a time or putting some in you know, one place and not another. And so that's something I'm probably going to experiment more with this amp and the 12AX7EL34 especially is possibly bypassing some of the caps and not others or... You know, just playing around with that as a tuning tool on trying to get the sonics where I want them to be. So, anyway, I don't know if this is a, you know, a retraction video or what you want to call it, but yeah, I was wrong saying that this stuff doesn't matter because, and this is the first cap on the rectifier to totally changed the way the amp sounded and so there we go learn something every day at least i got this thing back where it sounds good where i like it because at first i thought man i can't even listen to this thing now what happened and so that's what happened so these dc link wema caps are definitely I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's got the, if it's something to do with the ESR. I need to measure, you know, the, these different caps and see what's different about them that could have created what I was hearing. Because capacitors, to me, I I need to do a video on capacitors too. Because I know for a lot of people, capacitors are a real kind of baffling, hard to understand thing. And it's like, okay, you got them in the power supply. But you've also got them like between the tube stages and they're, and they're doing different things even though they're operating the same way and so i need to do a video on that explaining capacitors and how they work but i think i've got kind of a you know a layman's understanding of what capacitors are doing and how they work but clearly there's something going on here that i don't understand and and i don't see how this first cap in the power supply would change the sonic signature coming out of the output transformers like it did. But, hey, there it is. So, if you're ever struggling with that kind of stuff, this may be what's going on. Anyway, I just want to give you a kind of a, a little lesson learned video today. Hope you've enjoyed this content you are please subscribe to the channel please like the video thanks again to you patreon folks folks that make donations to my site super appreciate that as well as you folks that participate with the amazon affiliate program anything you buy through my portal i get a little piece of it doesn't cost you any extra and also i'm going to put a link to my little funnel cartridge magnifier if you don't have one these are awesome it's kind of, you got to get up real close to get the magnification, which is true with any kind of magnifier like that. But you can really see the needle and tell if it's clean or not. And the little Hudson needle cleaner, I'll put that down in the description too. It's super good. So anyway, till the next video, have a nice day.